which cultural norms have been around for far too long. Meetings that clearly could have been an ML. Having to explain why you're taking a day off never made sense to me. Whenever I told my scheduler I needed a day off, they always asked me why, and I always answered it doesn't matter why. I'm using my time off for this. When I became the scheduler, I always stopped people when they started going into detail why they need their time off. I don't care if you're gonna go sit on the couch for a day or steal the declaration of independence. If you ask for time off, I'm gonna try to make it happen. Next time we lose a precious national treasure I'm blaming you. You know what you are? You're a Nicolas Cage enabler. That's what you are. I was an enabler once. Bastard stole my grandmother's face. He then replaced it with Rachel McAdams face. And now I don't know what to think. Big ticket items like cars and appliances aren't expected to last longer than 3 to 7 years. For appliances I've learned just by the bare bones ones without lots of fancy stuff. They tend to last way longer and are usually cheaper and easier to fix. At least in the US. Not taking about how much you make. Your bosses can't fire you for it but everyone thinks they can. It's kind of a double edged sword. For example. I do graphic design and data processing at my company and my starting pay was close to what some of the people who work the warehouse's box pushers 20 plus years were making. Since I had to get training and have a specific skill set to do my job it's natural I get paid more. But man. Having 80% of the workforce be miffed at you because you make as much as they do in a fraction of the time makes the workplace feel toxic. My current philosophy is to only share my pay with people working in the same type of setting as me, so the other graphic designers and data folk, since a lot of people can't grasp that different areas of different pay grades. My state switched to a performance pay model, but with an annual contact, a year or so, before I was hired. The veteran teachers are on a different pay scale, and get small but steady pay, increases as they go. In 6 years. I now make more than teachers who have been working 20 years. It's come up a few times and I've felt as though they were angry with me and not the system that is screwing them over. It can be quite uncomfortable. Which state? I'm a teacher in CA, Florida. The idea in service jobs that you have to stand and look busy your entire shift because sitting down makes you look lazy. Bragging about working over 40 hours on salary. Conversely as a manager, other managers conflating working over 40 hour on salary with dedication or professionalism. Yes, as a professional I will put in extra hours to get the job done. If every week takes 5 extra hours to get the work done then my salary is based on something is wrong. That the customer is always right. I think I understand what it means in spirit, but the problem is customers took it too far. It's supposed to mean, if someone asks for their steak well done, you give them a well done steak and get paid for it instead of arguing about how steak is supposed to be cooked not. If someone demands to use you as a human toilet you have to let them. Going to work when you're sick to prove you're a hard worker. All you've proven is that you don't care about your coworkers. Tell that to management. Everything penis at bachelorette parties and the whole theme of stags in general. That entire last night of freedom energy is weird, if you stop and think about it. Yeah I don't get that. Why are you getting married, if you want freedom? Also, why should a marriage be the complete end of freedom? Like okay, I wouldn't go around for one night stands when married. But I don't do that when single either. But I like going out with friends, or going to concerts. And if someone thinks I'm not allowed to do that after marriage, I'm not marrying that person. Precisely. This was my view of marriage, and you know what I ended up with? Married to someone who takes me to concerts, movies, spontaneous road trips, lets me bring home the animals and there is still nights I go with the girls. He goes with the guys. Never on the same nights. Someone gotta watch the spawn, it's all about right person. Settling down does not by any means mean settling. You mean you have a happy, healthy marriage? The reddit relationship experts say that doesn't exist. Commuting. Hope it dies or becomes optional for desk jobs. Stay at home orders have crippled the argument that it's impossible for many jobs 
I expect a lot of companies to allow hybrid schedules, work at home some days in the office the others, if not full work at home for many positions. They don't even need to say it's impossible. My job does mixed office and remote schedules right now, but they have put out notices saying they have no intention of becoming a work from home company and it's explicitly a temporary measure. So yeah they can just not want to, which is fair I suppose, but still annoying. Corporate culture as a whole but specifically, corporate slash independent pandering to rude customer slash guests etc. It encourages them to act entitled and like shitheads cause they keep getting rewarded for it. Normalize being a dick. I joked with my boss one day that you should officially be able to tell off one customer a year without consequence. Because that one person would really deserve it if you turn in your coupon over them. Months later he asked me to repeat my idea to the regional president. In the context of it being a joke. But still. This guy doesn't know I'm a hard worker and a joker. Now that I think about it the idea stuck with him. That sex ed is still mainly based around abstinence in school. US. Some places worked past it. Fortunately. I. E. My own school started with best way to avoid teen pregnancy as abstinence. But since we know that won't work and some of you will do it anyway here's how you get free condoms. Yes. That was an actual thing in class. I don't recall where exactly you're supposed to go. Though. MMMM my school eventually transitioned into that minus telling kids where to get condoms. Basically sex ed became optional. And when it was bad it basically circled around abstinence, and if you've already had sex you're a bad person. That if you have sex you will get pregnant or in standard. Or both. And if you were gay, and did anal you would very likely get AIDS and die. Lol they were ruthless. Not wearing capes. I agree I want a cloak. I wanna wear a cloak and gas mask and just wander the hills by the road freaking people out. Today they probably wouldn't give the gas masks a second look. Stupid pandemic. Stay home hash m-a-k-e-g-a-s-m-a-s-k-s-p-o-o-k-y-a-g-a-i-n. Maybe more controversial. But weddings. Or more specifically the bridal industry. I don't understand how it's still such a profitable industry with how much it costs against how little people make. I understand the huge party and inviting all your family. But the price gouging for venues and cakes is astounding. It's sad that people are willing to pay the inflated prices. My friend saved quite a bit of fo money by just not saying it was a wedding on a few things. Let's see. One white wedding veil. It's not for a wedding. Though. Ah. Uh, my partner and I like to role play in bed. And this bride slash groom cake topper. We are also into bud stuff. Apostrophe. I made my own veil with less than a yard of tulle and hot glued it to a little dollar store hair comb. Cost maybe 5 bucks, I've been married for 13 years the details are fuzzy lol, and 15 minutes of my time. Comparable veil at a large nationwide bridal chain? Like $60. The bridal racket is nuts. Yeah I remember looking at a veil, when I was being fitted for a bridesmaid dress. I thought it was really pretty, because it had beads, or fake jewels or something on the fabric. Then I saw the $80 price tag, and was like nope, not that pretty. People visiting, right after you've had a baby, or babies. Let mothers be alone with their infant or infants, unless you plan to come over to cook, and clean for them. Otherwise, send a text wishing them well. Maybe drop off a meal, and leave them alone. Until they ask if you'd like to come meet baby. Ah yes. My family's practice is usually to bring some food slash baby supplies by pretty soon after they get home. And then meet the baby two or three weeks later. Mom and baby have been through a hell of an ordeal and need to rest for a bit. Edit, of course. If help is requested. We are happy to assist. We just don't want to invade anyone's personal boundaries. Casa rolling is what we call it. It was pretty common, not just in my family, but our church community as well. If anyone had a major life event, baby, death in the family, major surgery, etc, people would bring over food, usually casseroles, so that meals were handled for a decent period of time. The idea that autism ever means that you are a dumbass or the smartest person alive. At school nobody I've told about it has reasonable expectations. Always ever babying me when I do bad on a test or thinking I'm the next fucking Stephen Hawking when I get a 10. 
Autism is so misunderstood. Sure. There's many traits that people with autism often have. But it often presents itself in totally different ways for different people. Some people just can't seem to wrap their minds around the idea that they likely encounter many people with autism and don't even realize it. Many people with autism just live perfectly normal lives. They are educated and work normal jobs. And take care of themselves. There are some people on a different end of the spectrum that may be more childlike and need help and support. But as I said, different for each person. Hence why it is a spectrum. Exactly what I'm saying. But it's pretty common for people to think all autistic people are on just one end of the spectrum. The whole Asian culture where you follow your boss into the drink hole and stay there until he taps out. I have a coworker from Hong Kong who told me about this. And I couldn't believe it. It sounds awful. He said you have no idea when you're going to get home. Or how drunk you'll have to get. Immediate responses. Unless it's an emergency. You shouldn't be expected to answer something right away. 24 to 48 hours is more than acceptable. Having to jump through hoops and interview with 10 plus people to get a job. When did it become so difficult? Why do companies need an army of people to make a decision? Why do they need to waste people's time and have them interview 3 to 5 times? Why does someone need to write a thousand cover letters for jobs that they apply for only to not even be considered? Why do you have to write a thank you note for everyone you interview with? Why can't they be upfront about the pay scale? Why is it rude to ask what the pay is? It's pure madness. This. Why are businesses being so coy with salaries? I'm not writing a cover letter unless you tell me what you'll pay me. It's why I love applying for government jobs. I know they at least have a defined and non-negotiable range. Tying being a morning person to being a better person morally. One has nothing to do with the other. Yes, I'm naturally a night person. So I have found night shift jobs. I don't plan anything for before 2pm etc. I also don't shift my schedule to mornings when I'm off. I get so many dirty looks and judgment when I say I'm just starting my day in the middle of the afternoon. Or, heaven forbid I get a drink at 7am when I just get off work. It was horrible when my kids were little. I would get so much snotty looks. No Susan. I can't volunteer for the school trip. It hit the middle of the night for me. Prisons that don't rehabilitate. Part of the issue isn't just rehab. But also the fact nobody will hire someone with a record. 90% of schooling norms at least in America. The depression and suicide rate due to school related issues is far to higher needs to be addressed and changed. There are also way too many intelligent and gifted kids who are completely unchallenged at school who can't even get through college because they aren't given the chance to develop good academic habits. Saying as most of my stress dreams are about being stuck in school. I concur. I graduated about a decade ago. School was not enjoyable as a young depressed teen. I know so many people in their 40s, 50s and even 60s who say they still get nightmares about school. My mom still has dreams about school at times too. Thinking that if someone has good grades they are smart. And having bad grades mean you are stupid. 